you don't take corruption, there's no way you can make any meaningful living in life. Can you talk about the stomach infrastructure policy? Stomach infrastructure is simply about the welfare of the people. Coming to the level of the people. And the mere fact that you are a minister does not make you to be criminal. No court of law has convicted them. A captain, a businessman, and a politician, His Excellency Governor Idris Wada, the incumbent governor of Kogi State, is running for a second term under the platform of the People's Democratic Party against his predecessor, one-time predecessor, predecessor, Chief Aoudou Abubakar, who's running under the party of the All Progressive Congress on November 21st, 2015. You're welcome to the show, Your Excellency. Thank you. Good evening, sir. Thank you so much, Thank sir. You. Sir, you recently had a tete-a-tete -tete with um, President Muhammadu Buhari, where you spoke to him about the upcoming elections, and you asked him to ensure that it's a free and fair elections, that all security are deployed to your state to ensure that everything is going as it's meant to be. Can you tell us more about this meeting with Mr. President? Uh, well, good evening and thank you very much. Uh, I cannot talk too much about the meeting, but on the issue of uh, the election, I appeal to Mr. President to ensure that we have a level playing field. Nigeria has made a lot of progress in uh, election matters over the last few years and my appeal to the president is for him to ensure that we sustain the positive trend in election processes in Nigeria by creating a level playing field. We have two main parties in Nigeria now, the PDP and the APC and if, if under the PDP administration we were able to have a free, fair and credible election I appeal to Mr. President to ensure that under his watch we have uh, we make more progress in election affairs by ensuring that we have a level playing field. We have challenges of insecurity. I'm beginning to notice some of them that uh, some of our youth were killed recently, innocently, uh, because of political um, issues. And I uh, would not like that that is uh, a build up to the next election where more people are killed. So in order to stamp out violence, it was important that I raise it with Mr. President that the trend I'm seeing is troubling. And therefore, security agencies should be charged to uh, ensure that we have uh, adequate security for the success of the elections. Great, thank you so much, sir. Thank you. So your contender, your major contender, Prince Aoudou Abubakar, is mm. running under the platform of the All Progressive Congress. Yes. Since the All Progressive Congress is the incumbent party nationally, mm. does that scare you? No, it doesn't scare me. Um, it, they, yes, APC is at the federal level, but this is a state election, don't, don't forget. And people are going to judge us based on our character, based on our performances, and based on their own aspiration for the future in terms of the kind of leader they will want to progress the affairs of our state. And I'm confident that based on the record of performance I have uh, done over the last three and a half years, with the resources available to me, uh, I'm confident that our people will uh, uh, you know, express their confidence in me to carry things forward. I'm not scared at all, provided there's a level playing field Provided that security is tightened and um, when we have a free and fair election, I'm confident that I'll be successful on November 21. In our state, we've completed at least 58 roads in various parts of our state. We are building a lot more and building uh, a dual carriageway bypass uh, around Lokoja to give us mm -hmm. a, an opportunity to develop a new uh, Lokoja because as a historic city, we have a lot of old buildings where knocking them down and exactly. trying to modernize. That, uh, that, that has to do with the 500 housing unit yes. um, that you're building exactly. currently and the 16,000 yes. kilometer road in yes. Makuja. 16, 16 yeah, kilometer. kilometer. Yeah. Um, you said 
you, you also talked about the people who currently live there. You said they have sentimental attachments to these homes and property because their fathers' fathers have owned them, right? So how did you end up convincing them and compensating them for breaking down this building to, to their buildings and their property to build a more modern infrastructure in Kogi State? Yes. What we, are, we are not destroying the old buildings because of their historical significance. I mean, if you go to London or New York, there are still areas of those cities that have very old buildings. And uh, so you can integrate old buildings with modern buildings. And that's why we're developing a new layout. So this uh, 500 housing unit is in a new area of the town. The bypass is a new area of the town, which creates a new area which we're developing as a modern city of Lokoja. So we are preserving the old buildings and where buildings need to go, we pay adequate compensation to the people and explain to them the essence of modernization and improvement uh, of the structure of uh, our state capital. That's so when you have people who tell you, no, there's no amount of money you can pay me or compensate well, me for this, no. how do you deal with situations well, like that? Fortunately for me, we haven't met such people in our <laughs> state yet. But Generally, the public interest overrides personal or private interest, and the laws are there very clear for us to be able to acquire the property if it is in the public interest. But we have not had uh, such challenges since I came in. We've been able to explain the essence of the development to our people, and uh, most of them have cooperated with the direction and aspiration of our government uh, in trying to modernize our state capital. With the assistance of the Dangote Foundation, we are building the first robotic vocational training center in Nigeria in Lokoja. It's at an advanced uh, stage. And uh, there is a, a diagnostic hospital we are building, which will be equipped with very modern medical equipment to uh, uh, provide better medical services for our people. There are a lot of projects that you're working on that are still in progress. Are there any projects that are fully completed that you can look back on from your four years in office and said, yes, I built that, I implemented those strategies? Yes. There are several. I said 58 road projects have been completed. Hundreds of schools have been built, both at the primary level, at the secondary level and uh, tertiary institutions, new facilities, hostels, lecture theatres, office blocks, you know, uh, laboratories. All these have been, several have been built in the course of my administration. And, and one key thing we did is for the first one and a half years in, my, in office, I made sure that we focus on completion of ongoing projects. Because when government, Previous administration invest on a project which they have done 40 percent, 50 percent, 60 percent completion, and a new government comes and abandons it. It's the people of the state that that lose out. If that government is gone, but the facilities that are incomplete and cannot benefit the people. So I focus on completion of ongoing uh, projects. Uh, when I came in, uh, we have a, an extension to the uh, phase two of our state secretariat. I completed and commissioned it. We had a, a very modern stadium, um, 25,000 capacity stadium. It was substantially completed before I came, but we uh, put finishing touches and equipped it with facilities to make it operational. Um, and there uh, several other projects that were being done by my predecessor that were not completed, I completed them. We built hospitals um, and so water projects across the states. Some partially done, others we started and completed. So uh, I think that element of completion of ongoing projects which we met and the new things we have done gives us a solid record of uh, you know, meaningful development for our people, taking the interests of the people ahead of personal or other primordial interests. Thank you, Your Excellency. Let's take a short break and we'll be right back on The Osasu Show. Welcome 
Welcome back to the Osasu Show. Still with me is the Executive Governor of Kogi State, His Excellency, Governor Idris Wada. Thank you so much for sitting thank tight, you. sir. Thank, thank you. Thank you so much. Our national economy right now is in dire need of yeah. revival and yeah. diversification. Yes. How do you intend to increase the and continue the internally generated revenue of Kogi State if you're re-elected governor? Yes, thank you very much. We've made substantial progress in, in internally generated revenue in the state. When I came in, it was about 180 million a month. Now we are between 550, 600 million a month. And what we've done is to try and block some areas of leakages in the revenue collection system and documentation of taxable uh, facilities and uh, individuals. Uh, we are automating the process uh, using ICT and uh, if by the grace of God I'm re-elected we'll pursue that line, improved use of technology to tap uh, internally generated revenue. How so? How so? Using computers, give e-receipts instead of manual receipt where people put carbon and write different figures <laughs> on original and they duplicate. Mm -hmm. If you give e-receipt there's no way you can uh, you know, cheat in that way. So we're also training the personnel. We recruited 60 young graduates uh, and we've trained them on revenue collection and documentation. So they go around facilities to uh, ensure that people pay their taxes. There's advocacy. We promote the fact that you cannot have proper development without people meeting their own obligation of paying taxes to accrue revenue to, to government. So with training, with improvement in tech, use of technology, with proper documentation of the tax paying population, both corporate and individuals, uh, if we pursue those uh, lines, I'm confident that our revenue generation profile will continue to improve uh, you know, as we go forward. Okay, we've talked about um I'm sure you're aware about the oil prices, the crash in oil prices. Um, our, our country, we've been very dependent on oil for a long time. But now that Mr. President is looking for ways to diversify our economy, you know, we've talked about agriculture, the mining sector, and all these different natural resources. Kogi is a very rich land. It has a lot of natural resources. So how do you, what do you intend to do in that aspect? Do you, intend to um, delve more into agriculture or the mining sector, what exactly can you do to uh, diversify the economy of Kogi State? Thank you again very much. Uh, when I came into the office, we developed a blueprint for transformation of Kogi State, and that blueprint was focused on agriculture, uh, infrastructure development, industrialization, leveraging on the solid minerals you have just referred to, and then human capital development, which is health and a development of educational facilities. Now, agriculture is, will be the mainstay of the Kogi economy of the future. We have uh, about 70% of our people live in the rural areas. We have arable land. We are lucky to be blessed by the body of the largest river uh, in West Africa, rivers Niger and Benue, both of which confluence in uh, Lokoja. So we have water, we have land, arable, fertile land, and promotion of agriculture generates wealth and employment for a lot of people. And over the last three and a half years, I've been able to bring agriculture to the front burner. And a lot of people are turning to agriculture. We are converting agriculture from a vocation to a business, agribusiness is prevalent in our state. In the course of my tenure, Kogi has become a rice producing state uh, to be reckoned with in Nigeria. We are bagging Kogi rice now. And uh, also we have uh, promoted cassava in a big way. And uh, we are the leading cassava producing state in Nigeria. And uh, we are um, bringing in cassava processing industrial complexes uh, some in the rural areas and also uh, working with the Federal Minister of Agriculture by developing a staple crop processing zone in uh, 
cooperation with Cargill, which is a big American food uh, conglomerate, to produce starch and sweeteners. Mm -hmm. These are things that are now 100% imported into Nigeria. So it will make uh, a lot of difference in backward integration and uh, employment generation and wealth creation. That's very impressive, Your Excellency. Very, very impressive. And I know um, a few conglomerates, I would say, were just giving licenses to mine um, for gold, to look for gold in Kogi State. How would, do you know how those licenses were disbursed? What procedures they followed? The licenses uh, for solid mineral exploitation in Nigeria are issued by the Federal Ministry of Mines and Solid Mineral Development. Uh, and uh, once you identify an area you're interested, you go to their cadastral office and uh, apply and follow their processes. It's, uh, it's a federal government processes. All solid minerals in Nigeria belong to the federal government. So you had no say in it? No, no. <laughs> okay. We are custodians mm -hmm. in terms of land. So the state government gets involved in terms of land ownership. And where we find a partner, we support the application and help them to push it through at the federal level. Okay. And that's why many states are agitating that such uh, minerals should be left to the states to exploit, like you have in Australia. The process is shorter. When you have to deal with the federal government, sometimes it takes a much uh, longer processes to achieve the objectives. Okay, let's switch gears a little. Let's talk about the United Nations Initiative, the Global Goals um, for Sustainable Development, which is targeted to be um, accomplished by 2030. So if you're a re-elected governor, how would you implement some of these policies like the eradication of poverty, gender equality, um, sustainable clean drinking water? So how would you implement and help Nigeria accomplish these sustainable development goals before um, the time is up? Yes, thank you. Well, uh, on poverty, uh, which is a global issue, I think creation of wealth through agriculture, industrialization uh, is something we are doing already. We will continue to promote it because, again, I see as agriculture as the way forward for a Kogi economy. Uh, with gender equality, I have I've complied to the 35% commitment <laughs> on uh, having people appointed in administration, and uh, we accord the uh, the opposite sex, their rightful place in the affairs of the government that I run in Kogisti, and I intend to do so. I have the greatest respect for women, and I believe in their capacity as, uh, you know, very good managers of people and resources. Without women, I won't be here. So <laughs> I have the greatest respect and admiration for the work that women do. So under my administration, you can be sure of promotion of gender equality. We have passed. Uh, a gender equality law in Kogi State. And uh, so I, I will work hard to um, move forward with the sustainable uh, development goals. Thank you, Your Excellency. And lastly, before we close up, can you tell the viewers and people of Kogi State why they should re-elect you? And to the naysayers, despite all the achievements that you've mentioned, those who say that you haven't done as much or that they don't see the difference in the lives of the people in Kogi. What do you have to say to them and why should they re-elect you as governor on November 21st? What, what I, I would say to them is that major development pari passu with the resources available to you. You cannot develop without money. You cannot develop without commitment. In me, they have a leader who is committed, who is passionate about transformation and development of our state. I'm sincere, and uh, you haven't had issues of corruption attached to me since I came into office. I'm still myself. I've not allowed the office to get into my head and live larger than life. And that means I have clearly managed the resources of Kogi State very prudently in the face of all the financial challenges we face as a nation. I mean, uh, so I, I, they, they should, they will see me the way I am, an honest leader, devoted to the improvement of the lives of our people. And uh, I work very hard and uh, very sincerely. And uh, I believe that uh, I am the leader 
that will move Kogi to the next level if given an opportunity over the next four years. The, many of the projects we are doing are income generating so that we don't depend continually on uh, federation account allocations. I'm moving Kogi into the future to move from a, a state that is totally dependent on uh, federal allocation to one that will be generating income. We are building Kogi House, an 11-story building here at the Central Business District in Abuja. The idea is it's a commercial enterprise. By the time the building is finished and it becomes operational, Kogi will be generating hundreds of millions a year from that building alone, which will improve uh, income. So things I'm doing in Kogi State are for the benefit of the people. There's no personal benefit to me except the satisfaction of working to improve the lives of our people. So I will appeal to our people, give me another chance, trust me, I'm committed to the transformation of our state. And over the next four years, I'm sure that I will have moved the transformation to a sustainable level that whoever comes after me will be able to uh, you know, further add to that rather than a start-stop, start-stop situ situation that uh, has been going on since Thank you so much, Your Excellency. I hope you will accede when next we call on you to be on the Osasu Show. Yes. <laughs> Thank you so much, sir. God bless you. Right now, about 507 million women and girls worldwide cannot read and write. So Story Summit is about empowering young girls to be able to write their own stories, to empower themselves to make decisions for themselves and be proud of who they are, write about the stories, read well, apply reading to their lives and become wonderful people in the future. Around for Story Summit, we let girls know that, okay, you can be who you want to be in the future, you can, you can be who you want to be when you're growing up. And growing up is a normal part of life. It's okay for you not to do well in some subjects sometimes. You have to practice to get there, but it takes practice to become who you are. And it's wonderful to be here today. Once again, I love to see all your faces and I hope we all have a wonderful show. I'm a product of a woman and I believe strongly that every young person, whether you're a male or female, you must continue to support the girl child. And that's why we have been advocates of gender equality and the empowerment of women. We believe when you empower a man, you have empowered a single person. But when you empower a woman, you have empowered the world. Because women reproduce. Please, you have the right to your sexual life. Eh? If any man is coming close to you and you are not really understanding what this person is doing, please shout for help. That's the first thing we always do in health. We always say shout for help. For you to, you know, meet and uh, reach that greater height you desire is only education because if you are not educated, there is limitation to what you can do and what you can achieve. So, who here wants to be president? Young ladies. You? Yes, good. I need to see more hands. All of you should aspire. To there we go, ladies everywhere, this is good, this is good, and guess what, you can be what you want to be. And I keep saying that, and most people think, okay, it's just inspirational, but it's really not. Anything you can think of, anything you can dream of, you can become. Don't let societal perception and what people think or what people say hinder you from achieving and striving to achieve your goals. So that's it for this episode of The Osasu Show. To find out more information or follow us on Instagram, Facebook and Twitter at The Osasu Show. And you can visit our website www.theosasushow.com for more current affairs news. Don't forget to watch all past episodes on our YouTube channel. The link is right below. And for sponsorship opportunities, you can call or email the details below. Until next time, take very good care of yourself.